Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to look at changes in absorption phenomena which occur during different conditions. Now we have already seen that a typical absorption spectra of any molecule, whether it is a biomolecule or a chemical entity, can be represented by this kind of graph where you can observe that the top part is representing the point where it is showing the highest absorption and the wavelength at which it is showing the highest absorption is also known as lambda max of that molecules which we have already learned earlier. <coughs> now one question that arises here that does this graph always remain same for a molecule? Does lambda max always remain same or the intensity of light absorbed by the molecule always remain same? Obviously not. There are plenty of ways or plenty of conditions in which this typical spectra of a molecule might change. Now, what are those conditions? Let's talk about those conditions. Actually, there are four different type of shifts that can be expected in a spectrum on either directions. There may be increase or decrease in intensity of light absorbed or there may be change in the lambda max to higher wavelength or to lower wavelength. So we can now say that first type of change in absorption phenomena or this characteristic spectrum would be occurring in one direction where the intensity of absorption would change. And as you can see here, if the intensity of solution increases, it is considered as increase in uh, intensity or it is called as a hyperchromic shift. But we should remember that in hyperchromic shift, still the lambda max is the same. That means it is absorbing the same wavelength to the highest extent which it was doing earlier. Similarly, another kind of change can be decrease in the intensity. And as you can see here, the intensity is decreasing, but still the lambda max is same. So this kind of shift in the decrease in intensity of light absorbed is known as hypochromic shift. So we should remember these terms, hyperchromic increase in intensity without changing lambda max hypochromic shift decrease in intensity of light absorbed without changing lambda max. So in two situations, lambda max does not change. Whereas two more situations where the lambda max changes. One of the situation is towards right. That means if you compare the first graph, which was the ideal graph of the standard condition. And when you change condition, if the absorption graph now changed to this place, that means the shape of the graph is still same. It is absorbing some light at a specific wavelength, which you can say is lambda 2 now. And as this wavelength has now increased towards the uh, higher wavelength side, you often consider as a spectrum on this side, you have blue and this side you have red. Red is towards higher wavelength, blue is towards lower wavelength. So we call this kind of shift as red shift, or there is another name that is known as bathochromic shift. Now, besides this, fourth type of shift that can happen in uh, uh, molecules, that is towards left hand side, which means uh, at, in that situation, a molecule is now absorbing wavelength or lower wavelength or higher energy radiations. And this kind of shift will now decrease the lambda max. Suppose this was yellow color light, which was being absorbed earlier. In this situation, uh, it is absorbing red color light, whereas in this situation, let's say it has started absorbing blue color light. So if the lambda max decreases, then it is known as blue shift or hypsochromic shift. So now we have a summary of all those things. Hyperchromic shift increase in intensity, hypochromic shift decrease in intensity. In both situations, lambda max will not change. But then we have two more types bathochromic shift where lambda max increases and hypsochromic shift where lambda max decreases. And these two situations may be concurrent with hyperchromic or hypochromic shift means intensity might also increase or decrease during this red shift and blue shift. Now, another important question here is why does this happen? And are there some examples in biology with the help of which we can understand this more clearly? Yes, there are. So let's first talk about these two shift, hypochromic shift and hyperchromic shift. When do they occur? So if you take a typical case of molecules like nucleic acids, we would see that nucleic acids, when they are present in double stranded structure, which is a typical double stranded form of DNA, and the typical chromophore, which is present in the DNA, chromophore means 
the group or entity which absorbs light are nitrogenous bases and these nitrogenous bases are engaged in hydrogen bonding and therefore only few chromophores are available for absorption of light so in this situation it is having some amount of light but due to hindered rotation or hindered uh, you can say obstructed binding where these are involved in hydrogen bonding it is not easy for them to absorb light so all of the chromophores are not available only few chromophores are available and they have certain amount of light being absorbed now what happens if you denature them let us say you denature this dna now these uh, the strands became separate and when these strands became separate you can see that nitrogenous bases which are chromophores are now relatively free earlier they were involved in hydrogen bonding so when they are free they can now absorb more amount of light more photons and more pi electrons will be available so more light can be absorbed and therefore the intensity of light which was absorbed earlier by double stranded dna will now increase and therefore you will observe a hyperchromic shift a more pronounced shift will be observed when you further break down this dna when you uh, hydrolyze the dna into nucleotides so this kind of damage to the dna can be detected with the help of hyperchromic shift reverse is also true when you have a denatured dna and uh, if you are renaturing it by cooling down then during renaturation you will observe a lower shift that is hypochromic shift so hypochromic shift can be observed in the case when the dna is being denatured and hypochromic shift will be observed when the dna is being renatured so you can say these kind of shifts are very very important in analyzing the dynamics of the nucleic acids and the basis of uh, calculation of melting temperature and observing whether denaturation has taken place completely or not that can be done with the help of spectrophotometry by observing these kind, two kind of shifts now coming to the a uh, shift in the lambda max when does that happen and how does that happen so let's say this is a typical molecule which is uh, having some energy gap between the ground state and excited state and that's the basis for absorption means if an electron is present here and it get excited to this place so amount of energy that will be required by this excitation will be indicating absorption phenomena now suppose somehow this molecule is now present in a different environment in which it was present earlier at this state so if the environment has changed let's say the polarity of solvent let's say the dielectric constant of molecule has changed or which will lead to the changes in hydrogen bonding pattern which will change in electronic environment around the molecule and what it does it actually changes this energy gap so earlier this gap was low and now if this gap has increased due to the change in local environment or the solvent state and if this gap has now increased compared to earlier state then obviously every electron will now require more amount of energy to get excited so in that situation if every electron requires more energy than before then you will require a photon of lower wavelength because lower wavelength will have higher energy and therefore you can say that the spectra of molecule absorption spectra of molecule will be shifting towards the blue side or you can say lower wavelength side and we can say this will be representing blue shift now if you look at another situation on right hand side you will realize that there can be some solvents which will affect the environment of the molecule in a different way in first case there was increase in this energy gap so there was more energy requirement for excitation but let's say there is another type of solvent which is reducing this energy gap so if this energy gap is being reduced by another kind of environment which is changing the electronic state or which is changing the hydrogen bonding pattern in that situation you will require less energy to excite each and every electron and in that situation when less energy is required obviously you can work with higher wavelength radiations because higher wavelength will have lower energy so earlier if an electron was being excited by yellow light that can now be excited by red light but in the opposite this side earlier if a molecule or electron was being excited by yellow light now it is being excited by blue light so it all depends upon the nature of solvent which results in bathochromic shift or hypsochromic shift but it is not a very very universal rule that uh, 
if you shift a molecule from polar to non-polar, if you shift molecule from po non-polar to polar, each of these effects will be caused. In fact, any of these effects can be caused. <clears throat> In fact, uh, there are two terms. One of them is known as negative uh, solvatochromism and another term is known as positive solvatochromism. The term solvatochromism means change in the lambda max or shift in the lambda max to either side by changing the solvent. Suppose you have DNA being dissolved in water or protein being dissolved in water. If you switch it to acetone or you switch it to, uh, let's say, formamide, then dielectric constant are different. So you're going to observe the changes in absorption pattern. Now, absorption pattern may change in either direction. There are some uh, molecules which when added to polar solvent, they show blue shift. So if polarity of solvent, increasing polarity of solvent leads to increased shift towards blue side or reduced wavelength lambda max, if it get decreases, then it is known as negative solvotropism. On the other hand, if you increase the polarity and the increasing polarity leads to red shift or bathochromic shift, then that situation is known as positive solvatropism, so solvatochromism. So I mean to say solvatochromism is a phenomena of change in lambda max of a molecule with change in solvent. And if polarity increased polarity of the solvent that causes blue shift, it is called negative solvatochromism. Whereas if increased polarity of a solvent leads to the red shift, it is known as positive solvatochromism. And these kind of phenomena are often observed in various molecules. As you can see below on this screen, there is a dye which has been uh, dissolved in various different kind of solvents. So you can see a dioxon, you can see chloroform, acetone, ethanol, methanol, and you are able to observe that same dye is showing different kind of colors. Now, why this is happening? This is happening because in different solvents, there is different absorption of and that's why you are able to see different kind of colors. So these kind of solvatochromism are important for biosensor development and they can be helpful in developing the color indicators, particularly based on the absorption or <clears throat> spectrophotometric properties. So I hope I made this point clear that there are four different kind of changes in absorption, hyperchromic, hypochromic shift without change in lambda max, bathochromic shift, towards red side or higher wavelength, red shift or hypsochromic that is blue shift and there are two terms associated negative solvatochromism if increased polarity causes blue shift and positive solvatochromism if increased polarity causes red shift. Thank you very much.